Jesus, goddamn Christ. Where'd they all come from? I didn't expect a, a rehash of Lawrence, Kansas in this godforsaken hell hole. Keep your voice down. thinking. Yeah, well, that's a comfort. Should have done more thinking before we accepted this job. Well, you couldn't have known what we're up against out there. Spent a lifetime being careful. Now we're in this. I just hope the horses are still tied behind the express office. <laughs> I do find it funny, though. How? Yeah, we're holed up in the sheriff's office. Ironic. Huh? I said ironic. What's that? A state of affairs or an event that's contrary to what one normally expects. Are you shoving your book learning in my face again? Sure as hell never thought I'd be this age and caught up in a hornet's nest like this. Playing cards bores me, stranger. It's been three months since I've seen you, and you can't think of anything better to do than flipping cards. <laughs> hey. I see how you like it. Mm hmm I told you, Belle, there'd be time for anything you want. That's what you said last time. Then you and your buddy lit out of here like a bunch of sinners getting out of a church. Well, that was business, Bell. You two gonna get busy? Steamboats are coming. <laughs> Don't leave me for these long stretches, cowboy. Believe me. If I had my way, I'd never leave this room. I just had the house send up my meals and my whiskey three times a day. Oh, don't hand me that, Dev. You would be restless after two hours. Sometimes 
I wonder if you really know me, Etta. Like I know my favorite poem. You know, I spent a lifetime running after uh, almost everything. You did stop for a while once. Been trying to live that down ever since. Your mistake was that it wasn't with me. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> Undoubtedly. <laughs> you know, you two fellas should buy the Tack and Feed store for Moe's. He's 87 and he's been trying to sell it for eight years. I know you boys have the capital. Well, that's where you got it wrong, honey pie. We spent the last job's take on them army rifles for them Mexicans. How in the hell do you talk me into these things? Whiskey. No, serious, damn it. How in the hell do you talk me into these things? <laughs> Look, we got the map. Meeting place is set. Come in from the west. It's the Mexican army, for Christ's sake. Yeah, the officers. The idea is sound. Oh, whoa. That's a lot of rifle for this job, don't you think? We might need these sharps. They're not hunting buffalo. How many times have you almost get me killed? <laughs> You're keeping count? <laughs> <laughs> well, how's we didn't know those goddamn Mexicans weren't gonna pay us. We barely got out of there with our, with our lives. <laughs> You should have done what Dev suggested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Taking me and Etta to New Orleans. You could have bought me a new hat. Well, don't worry, sugar. This new job's gonna set us in tall cotton. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Mm -hmm. This came for you about an hour ago. <laughs> hey, we just got the telegram from McDonald. Jesus, do you always barge in on a room with a shut door? I knocked, gave you warning, so as Anna could get decent. What did the message say? He's ready for us. We're supposed to meet him at the mining base camp tomorrow. Well, <laughs> I guess this is goodbye to you fellas again. Hell, Dev, you just got here. Look, why don't you go tell Ethan to get the mounts ready? I'll be down in an hour or so. <laughs> sure, but uh, we best get a move on. I hear he's not the kind of guy that takes to tardiness. You could go say a proper farewell to Belle. Not like usual, okay? Sure, sure thing, Dev. Besides, that son of a bitch can wait. Right, and then, and then I'll go down and tell Ethan to get them out. Right. Now why don't you start by getting the hell out of here? Sure, sure. So long, Ada. Until next time, Jonas. <laughs> You two could not exist without each other. You may be right about that. <laughs> so.
say, why don't you ever take me on one of your little outings? <laughs> what the hell would you do? Oh, you're right. You're always right. Christ. Now, before you leave, why don't you tell me how wonderful I am? Oh, I'll do more than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a McDonald's! It's a McDonald's! It's a McDonald's! Why are you coming? You sure about this? It'll be easy pick of death. Just like taking candy from a baby. So you say. Okay, let's go. Gentlemen, I've been expecting you. We may discuss all issues here in conference. Let's get to it. <laughs> right down to business. I can appreciate that. Time is a precious commodity. My name is McDonald, and I operate the mining interests in this area. Your colleague in Santa Fe extolled the virtues of your professionalism, and even went so far as to speak glowingly of your discretion in such matters. Myra, say hello to Dev and Jonas. Hello, boys. I hope you're enjoying our salubrious climate. What's salubrious? My goodness, Mac. They certainly are handsome gentlemen. Well, say adios, Myra. I'll uh, see you upstairs later. Au revoir, boys. Found her on a Galveston riverboat. As I was saying, not everyone can appreciate the legality of my approach to this particular problem. Well, we kind of operate on the outside of recognized law. Easy. <laughs> I cast no judgment out here in this territory. Now, if this were Chicago or St. Louis, well, that might be a different story. But out here, out here in this godforsaken land, well, sometimes a man's got to go to extremes to protect what's his. Do you gentlemen disagree? Well, I thought not. After all, a buck's a buck, right? Well, now that we've dispensed with any moral question, are either of you gentlemen familiar with the town of Gilt Ridge? Sure. Isn't that where they had that cholera outbreak a year back? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The whole town was decimated. Those who weren't stricken with that filth just moved out. And the place is practically a ghost town now. So why send us to a graveyard? There's only one business that's maintained a presence in that hellhole. Either of you boys familiar with the express and payroll office there? <clears throat> well, it's run by the Tin Rock Mining Company out of Tucumcari. They kept it functioning as it's the nearest waylay station between there and the narrow gauge rails that service the mines in that area. They have something that belongs to me.
What? Two years ago, I was swindled out of a mining concession by those bastards. My stake was valued at $50,000. And I want my money back. Well, why don't you just telegraph one of your lawyers to do the job? Oh, you boys do not read me. I want what's mine, and I've got no faith in this territorial court system. Hell, that son of a bitch at the Tin Rock Mining Company just as soon see me shot out of hand by one of his regulators. So what kind of job is this? Well, boys, it's like this. Recently, I've become privy to the scheduling for all the currency and gold shipments in this whole territory. Now, in two weeks, there's to be a shipment of $60,000 to cover expenses for equipment and payroll for six of the mines in that area. Your job is to go into that office and relieve them of all of it. Using any means at your discretion, naturally. We just walk in there. Mm hmm Yeah. The town being what it is, there's hardly a soul to be met. Hell, the sheriff and the marshal were transferred out of there months ago. Uh, at best, you might encounter, you know, a couple of the traveling guards that protect the money. Something. Like, nah, nobody wants to go near that place because of the epidemic. So, in this particular case, fear can be your ally. You said there was sixty thousand dollars going through that office, but you're only looking for fifty thousand dollars. You plan on keeping the extra ten for yourself? No. I had intended for you boys to split that as your fee. So let me get this straight. We walk in there, take the money off of them guards using whatever means necessary, and we bring you back the 50,000 and we clear 5,000 each? Yeah, that's about the size of it. Gentlemen, it'll be a cakewalk. Just get in there, get my money back, and get out before humanity returns to the fair town of Gilt Ridge. The idea is sound. Why us? Because I am not a highwayman. I'm a businessman. Now, might I assume from the blank looks on your faces that we have an agreement? Hmm? Well, excellent. And with that, what's left to say other than Godspeed and A? Why not have a cognac to seal the deal? Hmm? Well, this is a rare sight. Can I interest you in a uh, hoe or a box of nails? <laughs> oh, come on, Rose. You know I hire all that work out. I will, however, 
Have a pound of your coffee, please. Mm. Must be real nice being a, a polite lady of society. Nah, not trying to be demeaning, Rose. Nah, I get it. Sure wish I had a big, strong man at my beck and call. Please. Sorry, Etta, I don't mean nothing by it. Eh, Dev's gone anyway. He and Jonas took off on one of their coon hunts, and so now I'm all by my lonesome. Well, where are they off to now? I don't know. Something about a mining guy named McDonald. Yeah, I'm um, meeting him just south of here at one of his base camps, and the boys have been real secretive about it. And they said they're gonna be gone for two weeks this time. Well, hell, that leaves you a wide open window to raise hell with that fresh little tart Jonas takes a fancy to. Two good looking dames with uh, money and freedom. Stop it, Rosie. I don't mind telling you that I'm mighty worried about something this time. Well, what? I don't know. It's just an intuition, like they're stepping into something too big for them to handle. You know, when I was a young girl, my daddy moved me out to this country. He had a job with Grenville Dodge. They were building the Central Pacific Railroad. Etta, do you love Dev? When I was a young girl in those railroad camps, I dreamed of owning a fine home in Boston. Lace curtains and crystal chandeliers. Do you and... love Dev, damn it? Yes. But I don't love his ideas, which are Jonas's ideas. And, uh, <laughs> damn, if he ain't loyal to that old dog. Didn't Jonas save his life or something? Hmm, supposedly. The most important thing is that I know he loves me. And, uh, Lord knows, I've set out to leave him more than once. Did you say those boys were meeting up with someone named McDonald? That's right. What is it, Rosie? Well, last night I was the white elephant. And while I was sipping my tequila, I heard a conversation at the next table. These three fellas, all wearing suits, kept mentioning that name. What name? McDonald. Three real highbrow city-fied types. They kept talking about this McDonald getting the surprise of his life. So, like they was setting up an ambush or something. Oh God, Rosie. Do you think?
wonder where how far we are to go. Let's check it out. You think McDonald has this thing clocked? Sure. Hell easy. He's a smart bastard. Bit high tone. Don't mind telling you I'm still sore as hell about that Mexican rifle job. Never should have trusted those officers. Well, how was I to know they was gonna come up short, Dad? Short? Those bastards never figured on paying us at all. <laughs> well, they gave us their word. Yeah, fat lot of good that did us. Yeah, I remember in General Miles' regiment, those two officers, yeah. yeah, loaded with hot air, full of liquid courage, just couldn't wait to read their names in the dispatches. I'm telling you, Jonas, they're all the same. It doesn't matter what army. Well, don't be a gooseberry about it, Dad. We'll recoup our losses on this job tenfold, and then it's off to Galveston and the gals. <laughs> I wish I was in a warm porcelain tub with Etta right now. You'd just be, uh, what's the word? I don't know how you say it. You know, you'd just be there doing nothing because you're in the, you know, the tub without it doing nothing. What's that called? Ennui. Huh? You're talking about ennui. What's that? Forget it. Now, we've had some good scores, too. Sure. I mean, it's, uh, when they throw me in that pine box, I won't regret a thing. It's a good life. Well, a man's life does not belong to himself. Hmm. I remember that bastard we met up with, right after we mustered out of the ninth. Yeah, who's that? You know, that picker would have owned all them riverboats. Mississippi? Yeah. Sure when you had that great idea for a pig farm. Jesus Christ. The idea was Sam. Uh-huh. Well, we made some money off of that feller anyways. Yeah. Recall he had a complete library of Samuel Johnson. I never figured him for being a double dealer and a snake. Yeah, I... I hear tell he... Came out here west and got into the mining business just like that dear friend McDonald. Well, he had some peculiar ways, most of which weren't exactly legal. Well, we did what we had to do. Bastards sent us into an ambush. To him, we were expendable. You think he knew? Yeah, probably. Yeah, still we got him his silver. Yeah. <laughs> Took quite a hunk of it for ourselves. That was our first steak. Well, I'd like to think we taught that fella a lesson. I yeah, remember riding back with the canteens all shot to hell. With a pebble in my mouth for spit. You taught me that. Well, a man can only die when he's careless. Yeah, still. I'm gonna go meet up with that rounder. Ten years, let it go. I recall being chased by those inbred Cajuns of his, like they was a bunch of screaming Kiowas. Yep. Bastard sure sent us into harm's way. Still, I wasn't worried. Why? You were there. <laughs> Yeah, we, we do tend to get ourselves out of these scrapes. Yep. Still, I'd like to settle up with that pecker wood. Tell you what, I'll shoot him for you. <laughs> now mount up, let's get the hell out of here. All right.
I don't know about this. I'm leaving the horses back here. It's out of sight. It's sound. I don't know. Cakewalk. Cakewalk. Reach. Don't even think about being heroes. Tie them up. Now don't make me beat one of you bastards senseless. Now boys, where are those bags? You fellas are in a bad box, because I got me an itchy trigger finger. Cakewalk. Well, let's not start celebrating just yet. This town makes me nervous. There's no one here. Exactly. <laughs> Hell of an idea, leaving the horses out of sight. My idea was sound. I bet you're getting angry right about now. That don't even capture the spirit of the thing. <laughs> Never thought I'd be this age and caught up in a hornet's nest like this. Next time something sounds too good to be true, you talk me out of it. Who are those regulators, you think? I don't rightly know. Maybe they knew McDonald was gonna hit this payroll. Yeah, we'll get out of this, you'll see. In no time at all, we'll be back with Ed and Bell with enough loot to raise hell in Santa Fe. You know, Bell says old Moses is about ready to sell the tack and feed. We could make him an offer. This is what I need. Something to tie me down again. I already had that life once before, and I ain't cut out for it.
remember the hardware store? Oh, come on, Dev. Lenny was a good woman for you in those days. If you would have just stuck it out. I spent too long with you and General Miles. Jason <laughs> hopped up Sue to settle for a life of selling nails and pans to those stiff-necked Mormons. <laughs> Cheapest bastards I ever seen. Cheat you faster than a snake oil seller if he wasn't one of them. Still, I suppose I should be grateful to that church elder that took a fancy to Winnie. <laughs> Solve that problem. Here, Telly took her to wife on top of his other three. Maybe she finally got kids out of that frog walking son of a bitch. score into a, a real future. We, we talked about it long enough. How many years we go back together? 20, maybe more. Seems like always. The problem is, your ideas never seem to pan out. Cause just like with Winnie, you never gave it your all. My ideas was sound. Yeah. Like those two rope drummer jobs you got us in Holdenville. Yeah, so was the supplier who was drunk in Abilene all the time. Well, at least... Jesus Christ. I try, which is more than I can say for the likes of you. Well, I kind of got my mind on other things now, Jonas. I'm just thinking positive of gloomy bastard. If I could get you off memory lane for one minute, I think I just realized something. Yeah. Those fellas saw us walk past the boarding house, right? Right. Well, they came in from the south of town. They probably don't know that we got tops and Bristol tied up in the back. They probably don't even know it's only two of us. Hell, they never went in and untied those guards. Now who's the pot dreamer? What I'm saying is, if we could get to the horses, we could get to the wash north of town. Then that puts us in the hills. And? Well, I figure there's a dozen or more of those fellas, if I counted their rifles correctly. And two of us stand a better chance of skedaddling up that mountain than a dozen or so? Precisely. Yeah, it could work. Come on. You were always a glass half full guy. Besides, our options are somewhat limited right now. I told you years ago, when you pointed me in the direction of them screaming Lakotas, I'd follow you into hell unless you say different. We'll split up when we get to the ridge. After the fork, the roads run parallel. I'll see you in McDonald's, come hell or high water. And Dev, no 
matter what happens, one or the other rides on. Hmm. At least one of us makes it. Hmm. Let's go. Shit.
I'm sore as hell at you. My I don't want to hear it. Let's get the hell out of here. Yellow bastard. Don't move. Drop it. Where's your partner? You said this was to be at the cakewalk. Last time I saw that many rifles, they was in the hands of Comancheros. Well, just, just take it easy. Lower your weapon. Surely you boys know the risks involved in your vocation. I just pull the strings. Death with my friend. God damn it. I'm gonna put a bullet right in your brain pan right to hell now. <sighs> Prepare to meet your maker. My demise may not come from your gun, my friend. What the hell are you talking about? Well, I'm gonna guess that you boys ran into the Ten Rock Regulators. Now, just how do you know that? Well, why don't you just turn around and take a look? Apparently, they followed you all the way back. <laughs> you think I'm gonna fall for that? <laughs> I ain't your puppet, Mr. McDonald. I assure you this is no trick. Your carelessness has led them right back here to us. Holy shit. You know, those boys that just as soon see me eliminated as you. Unfortunately for both of us, I dispatched my own guards to deliver our latest strike, so... It's just you and me. And our best chance? is an alliance. I make it a policy never to be more than just a few steps away from a Henry. I 
hope to God you're proficient with a rifle. All right, you'll find an array of rifles over there and some cartridges over there. Just grab yourself one. Ah, those sneaky bastards will think I'm probably holed up over there in the rooming house. What about your guards? When are they due back? <laughs> I don't know, maybe tomorrow. Depends on the road conditions. Not exactly reassuring. My friend, one must revel in self-confidence when uh, staring down adversity. Yeah, well, let's see how them $10 words get you out of this. to keep me from plugging you right here now. I don't have anything to lose. <laughs> you won't. You need me. Well, I need you. Expediency is the watchword of the moment. And more importantly, you don't strike me as a kind of man who'd just want to roll over and die without putting up some kind of a fight. Where'd them pecker woods go? You think they rode off? Uh, I think they're over there looking around in my rooming house. They wouldn't suspect us coming out here so close to the mines. Why? Well, the dynamite. Huh? This is where we store all the dynamite. Shit. You mean they could blow us up? Not without detonators. Oh, I suppose a stray bullet could hit a barrel, but, uh, you know, if they wander out this way, I'm sure they'll, they'll see that and they'll, you know, take caution. Yeah, we're probably gonna get our asses blown off. A calculated risk. One should always take refuge in the zone of the most danger. It throws your opponent off. You ever think about being a poker player? <laughs> I was. I was 13 years old. Made a pretty good penny of it, too, on the riverboats, but that uh, uh, was back before the war. I don't know how them fellows followed me. There was nobody up on that ridge. The Army cut a new bypass through that canyon two months ago, and I bet you didn't know that. I didn't. We didn't. You boys should have done more research before you set out. Listen here, you son of a... Holy hell, I forgot about Myra. Well, look at what we have here. Oh, shit. You never stood a chance. <laughs> wow. She can take care of herself. Have you come to terms with your life in the event that it should end suddenly? Huh? I think I can answer for all I've ever done. When I was a little boy, they sent me to live with my uncle on this farm in Kentucky. God, he was a miserable old cuss. He used to beat his field hands for no reason. But I learned learned from that moment that I needed to be the man that pulled a string. So when I was 10 years old, ran away, never looked back. Taught myself how to read and write with the help of a house servant Negro and a, 
cotton farm. He hid me out in the slave quarters on a nearby plantation. Good old Silas. Now he used to tell me, he used to swear that he was a grandson of God. He used to swear he was a grandson of Tom Jefferson's housemaid. Can you believe that? Uh, how'd you get all this? Uh, resourcefulness. Moxie. Laughing at fear. I just, I just did what I had to do to make sure I never had to Go back behind a plow and a mule. Not that there's anything. Yeah, well, you made a lot of money, didn't you, Mr. McDonald? You may be a great man. Seems you're no different than Deb and me. Don't you think all great men bend the rules to suit their needs? Hmm? Now, I have never openly broken the law, but... Uh, there's been times where I, I needed to circumvent it. <sighs> Laws can be so subjective. Yeah, yeah, you're rich. I'll give you that. Yeah, yeah, I guess you could say that, but you know what's stuck in the craw most of the men on this territory? It's when they discovered I'd been sending blankets and supplies to Geronimo's band. That's even renegade? The army even chased him down to Mexico. Why the hell you do that? Now, that is exactly the same attitude that General Crook had towards me. These people have a right to their lands. We're the ones that have created this situation. Yeah, well, they're thieving, murdering, raping thugs. Well, it depends on how you look at it. Hey, hey, a... hang on. I think I saw something move out there. Just hang on, hang on. All right. Wait a minute. Okay. All right, just uh, wait till I give the signal and then we'll open fire. All right. Wait a minute. Let him have it. Before, they sure as hell know now. Hell, I got two of them. Yes, you did indeed. Remind me to present you with a handful of Henry Clay cigars when we get out of this mess. <laughs> Listen, I just saw two of those Jayhawks go over there by the assay office. I'm gonna have to go out on the porch to draw a good beat on them. Yeah, supposing you get shot. Well, then you're on your own.
crazy son of a bitch is gonna get himself killed one of these days. Thank God for me. Gentlemen, kiss your asses goodbye. I'm out! Well, I about thought you weren't gonna make it, and I'd have to shoot them all myself. We had you figured for dead, my friend. Now why in the hell would you think that? Because I saw you shot off this horse. Well, there's the scratch. Bastards just winged me. Kind of knocked the wind out of me, though. But what the hell were you doing up there? Last look, she was laying on the ground. You remember that hostage trade with Cochise? You played dead? Yeah. Yeah, same idea. I figured to get some distance between those bastards and me. Come in from behind, you know, like deus ex machina. Huh? It's a great thing. Oh, yeah. Mighty grateful for your timing. You know, the boss of these regulator boys is gonna be mighty fired up at you. <sighs> My problem. Now, about our fee. Who the hell is that? Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> I might have figured. One day, you and I are gonna kill each other, McDonald. The world will little mourn the loss. Oh, looks like we lightened up your payroll obligations some. Yep. Cost of doing business, Mac. Just a damn minute. Don't I know the two of you? You be... Bo Huntington out of Mississippi, right? Dev, it's that son of a bitch from the riverboat job. He's older, but it's him. Yeah. Uh, you two don't look any prettier after all these years either. Had I known you were involved in this, I might have expected an ambush. So you boys are all acquainted with each other? <laughs> Bastard! Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, ho. Had the bad sense of hiring these two when they mustered out of the military, Mac. They was flies in the buttermilk even back then. So the competition continues between the Tin Rock and the McDonald Mining Company. Now it's three against one, unless you've got any men left hiding over that ridge. Nah, you clean me out today, Mac. So, now what? Well, I have a great sense of timing, especially when it concerns the right time to ride off. Maybe one day we will kill each other, you goat dancing bastard. It's possible. 
I think we both got a heap of living left, you old son of a bitch. So do you boys, I say. Goodbye. Come on. I should have shot that son of a bitch. Uh-huh. Uh, meet me over at the assay office and we'll uh, divvy up. I do believe you boys are due some sort of bonus. I'll see you over there. And uh, hey, maybe we'll drink us uh, some of that cognac again. <laughs> yeah, I prefer tequila. Hey, Jonas, I got an idea. What? Let's grab that drink, get our money, and, and let's get the hell out of here and go back to Bellinetta. <laughs> now that is a sound idea, Dad. We can all four of us go down to Galveston, maybe New Orleans. Didn't you say that Bell needs a new hat? That I did. <clears throat> let's go.